Hey, Judy, want to take a trip? Ryan, that's pretty funny. <laughs> no, I'm talking about flying. Ah. We'll give you more information as we fly into a new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time, and the trip we're talking about is a lot more fun than the one I took this spring. We're talking about our Garden Time trip this September to Belgium and Holland. The tour begins on September 6th, and it will be 10 days visiting the fabulous Holland and Belgium with scheduled stops in Amsterdam, Antwerp, the Ausmere Flower Auction, and the Floriade Garden Expo. The trip will include 18 of your meals. You'll see local gardens and landmarks with tours set up especially for our group. Plus, we'll stay at fine hotels, enjoy excellent meals, drink delicious wines, and experience the sights and sounds of these amazing destinations. There is a group airfare option if you want to travel with the Garden Time crew. Just check out the little airplane on the Garden Time website. Space is limited on this amazing trip. There's only about 10 spots left, so book your reservation today. But coming up on the show today, spring is here, and we'll show you some beautiful annual color for your garden. We'll also give you some tips on how to renovate your lawn. But coming up first, it's all about vines. I'm out here at Portland Nursery on Stark Street. I'm with Sarah. Sarah, vines. We have a lot of vines right now. <laughs> you like have a lot, an a lot of vines. Unbelievable amount of vines right now. <laughs> so, and well, we wanted to show you some of them. Yes. So that, it's like, here we go. You know, you could people ask us like, you know, what do you do with vines? Right? Because yeah. it can be it can be kind of overwhelming as do when you're picking out a vine. What do you choose? Yeah, it can be overwhelming because if you choose a vine that's too aggressive, you can take off the deck of your house or in, you know, ruin um, your siding. Um, but then also just what do you do with them? Where can you put them that is a safe place for them? And what are the different requirements that they need? So yeah. we brought a few examples. Yeah. So let's just start start down at the end. And you know, these are some of your favorites that you picked out. What's your first one you have there? Yeah, so this is Honeysuckle. It's a classic. Um, it's got that gorgeous fragrance that yes. everyone loves. Um, uh, so I think most people have heard of Honeysuckle, whether they realize it's a vine or not. Um, this one's really great because it can handle um, full sun and a little bit of part shade. I wouldn't say right. full shade, but it gives a little bit of options for people who don't have that full, full sun. Um, and it's got the hummingbirds love it. It's just a good all around vine. And, and a long bloomer. Mm -hmm. Oh uh, yeah. It'll, it'll start spraying and go, go throughout the summer. Yeah. It's, right. And like just having that smell waft when you're maybe outside having dinner or something is, right. is really a nice reminder that it's summer. Right. So. And you also have, you know, speaking of fragrance, you have jasmine. Right. It looks like there's some different varieties of some jasmines. There are. So we've got the, probably people are most familiar with the star jasmine. Um, that one also can handle partial shade, not full shade. Um, it's not that it's going to die, but it's just not going to bloom and grow as quickly. Right. Um, this one, I would say, it gets off to a little bit of a slow start, but once it gets going, it's like it grows and grows. Um, and then we've also got this summer jasmine, which has a kind of more dainty, lovely flower to it and a more dainty leaf in general. So it's got just kind of a different look. Yeah, and it seems like it grows, does grow a little bit quicker, but, you know, two different, you know, bloom seasons. Right, yeah. Okay. So and you can have... Um, there's a lot of different yeah, kinds of jasmine right. and lots of different options to pick from. You know, and this one is kind of a fun one, you know, this is, what's that guy here? Yeah, so that's a climbing hydrangea. Um, so this one can have, handle even, um, you know, that part shade as well. Um, I don't think you'd want it in that bright full sun, but it's just gorgeous to, if you've ever seen a climbing hydrangea, I mean, they can be really, really spectacular. Uh, one thing to note is you don't want to plant it right on your house. See these little tendrils right oh, here? Yes. Those will actually grow into your siding, um, which is not probably the intention. So uh, just having it just off the house a little bit, if you can build a trellis that's just even a little bit um, away from the house, that can protect your house right. while giving you that really gorgeous look. I mean, I think with vines, it's an enchanting way to bring kind of this vertical space down into right. the garden and it just gives something that not a lot of other things can. Right, because something like that on you know, a big blank wall where you need to fill it out and have it fanned out is you know, it brings, totally brings it to life and right. makes it just really nice. So, um, 
So here we've got clematis. Yes. Uh, that one is definitely a classic as far as flowering vines. They come in infinite number of colors and we have a really amazing selection of them right now. Um, they are gonna need full sun. And the trick with them is they want that full afternoon sun, but they want their roots to be shaded. Right. So you're gonna wanna plant them, you know, maybe a little shrub or a bush in front of them so that their roots are shaded, but the vine part is actually yeah. getting a lot so of the, the sun. So the sun up top, but shade, shade the roots down below. Yes, and um, they are one that's really safe to plant. Like if you have something near your house that you're wanting or like a front porch that you want to add a little something to, um, clematis are a really, really great right. choice. And lots of different, you know, you said bloom colors, but bloom seasons. Yes. As well, starting early, going all throughout the, you know, the spring and summer months, depending yes. on what you're looking for. And there is a little bit more to get into it when you start choosing a different type of clematis, uh, which our staff could help you out with. Yes. Yeah. And then a couple other fun ones. You know, this guy has some, some great foliage. What's this guy? That one is a kibia. So that one can handle, you know, probably out of all of these, it would handle the most shade. Um, and it's just got such a cool flower um, and such a great, like, I don't know, the, the vine on it, the leaves on it um, have just kind of a nice rounded yes. look. I don't know. It's just a nice vine. It's something yeah. a little bit different than some of the, yeah. the other ones. Definitely. If you have a shady spot, that would be what you would right. want to go with. And you know, another you know, different option. Yes. So the passion flower it is um, the flower that is our logo. Um, it is probably the coolest flower I've ever seen. Right. Um, and they grow well here. They're um, a unique, just a really, like if you want, if you have a place where people are walking by and you want them to stop and be like, oh, what's that? I mean, that's a perfect kind of right, vine right. for that. Yeah. So, you know, and then this guy over here has, you know, some very different leaf. Yeah. Looking to it. And so originally you might think, oh, that could be powdery mildew or some kind of disease. It's not, it's healthy. <laughs> Um, that one is actually part of its look. It, it's called Arctic Beauty Kiwi, and it's an ornamental kiwi. So you're not going to get kiwis from it, although you can grow those. Yes, because you can have another part. vine that would get yes, with the actual fruit. Yes, we do have fruit. that too, yes. Um, but this one is ornamental, and it's just kind of got that cool silvery look and a really beautiful, delicate white flower. Yeah, and then the last one over here, kind of the, you know, the, the <laughs> king of all of the vines. Yes, and that one there is the wisteria. I will say it is my favorite, like beauty wise. It is absolutely gorgeous, but don't plant it anywhere near your house. It will eat your house. This is the whole thing. Um, kind of like the little jack and the beanstalk. I'm, I'm joking kind of, um, but you know, we had one that was really close to um, our shed at our house. And every year we, my husband takes Max to it and it, it's gone and it comes back every year with a vengeance trying to just get after that shed because um, it just will take over. Right. So you want to be really careful. Right. You know, so no, not all vines are equal. So, you know, when you are selecting out a vine, you want to come out and make sure you talk to your staff about, you know, the area that you want to plant it in and making sure if it's going in a container or up by the house to make sure that you are picking out the right vine for the right spot. Yeah. I mean, if you plant that out in the middle of nowhere on a metal trellis, I mean, it's going to be breathtaking, yeah. you know? So yes, definitely the right vine in the right spot. So if you're looking for a vine, something unique or something, you know, that's been around for a long time, just looking for an area for in a pot, in a container, on a wall, up your house, up your arbor, up an obelisk, whatever you need, make sure you come out to Portland Nursery, out here to the Stark store or the Division Street store. Talk to Sarah, talk to their staff, and take that right vine for your area. So thanks for having us today. Sarah. Thank you, my pleasure. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Come to where the color is. Come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. 
Stop and get a mood lifter out here on the farm. We have lots of fresh air and lots of space. There's lots of blooming plants, new vegetable starts, shrubs, and berry bushes. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home, too. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. In Oregon, we are so lucky to have hummingbirds being able to come to our garden. And we have some great tips for you to attract them to your garden. I'm with Amanda from Backyard Bird Shop. And Amanda, you have a wonderful selection that we can put in our own garden to bring joy to see the hummingbirds. Absolutely. We try to have a wide variety of hummingbird feeders. And, um, but of course, one of our first recommendations is plant, 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 right? Sure, and definitely. And that's something Garden Time knows a lot about. We have so many fun flowers and plants that really bring in um, hummingbirds right into your yard this time of year. It is nice. And so why can't we do that during the summertime? But when the weather isn't nice, the flowers aren't blooming, we need to put out feeders to attract them and feed them. Sometimes even when the flowers are blooming, we still put them out, don't <laughs> that is we? so true. Absolutely. So we have bottle feeders, we have window feeders, and then this is my personal favorite style of feeder is um, the saucer style feeder. It's really easy to open, to clean mm. thoroughly, and, um, and it doesn't leak. And I just, I love this. You can, this one you can actually even put in the dishwasher and keep it clean, but it's a great way to bring it in. This has got the little high raised side, so it kind of puts them at a fun angle while you watch them feed. And that keeping this close to a window is really fun to watch. That is right. And then what do we put in that feeder? What kind of a solution? So you can make your own nectar right at home with plain white table sugar. And it's a half a cup of table sugar to two cups of water and you boil the water so you can dissolve the sugar all in there. But it's really important to use the really cheap, plain white table sugar. No molasses, no honey, no organic brown sugar. And all the stuff that we try to do to be healthy <laughs> is not what's closest to nature for the hummingbird. So we want to keep it as close to the nectar they would find in flowers. And then sometimes I see that the solution is red. And so is that important? It's important to not put red mm. dye in there. We really don't know about the safety of red dye. And so that's why when you look at the hummingbird feeders, there's always going to have some bit of red. It doesn't have to be a full red hummingbird bird feeder but at least the little flower spots will be red and so that'll draw your hummingbirds in and that way you know they're still getting something pure and healthy for them. Ah. And then let's talk about cleanliness because we want them to be healthy so what can we do? So we always preach if you're gonna feed feed any type of bird it's important to do it responsibly and with hummingbirds it's so important to keep the feeders clean and so we have little brushes that you can use to get in those little nooks and crannies or you can use a q-tip all kinds of different things to do but change the nectar often and really cleaning the feeder out especially in the summertime sometimes it's every one to three days wow. when the heat is at the highest but um but what I do is I put I make my nectar and I keep it in a glass jar in my fridge you can keep it in the fridge for about two weeks and then just fill it maybe a quarter of the way so you're not wasting anything and then you're just constantly cleaning out your feeder and refilling it. Ah, that's so responsible yeah and I know that um, uh, hummingbirds love to go to nectar they love to go to feeders but they also need protein too so you have this cool new feeder. We do so we have um, this is a humbug and it's this cool little feeder that you can put like banana banana peels in and other things like that to kind of help create a fruit fly <laughs> feeder. And so I definitely do not recommend hanging this anywhere near your kitchen because you don't want to invite them into your home. Sure. But out in the yard it's really fun because obviously hummingbirds eat insects all, it's, it's a regular part of their diet, but 
why do we feed them? To watch them. <laughs> and so if we want to watch them, it's a fun way to kind of keep them in one centralized area, flying up and down, grabbing those fruit flies. It's really fun and exciting to do. Oh, that is true. And you know, you can support Backyard Bird Shop when you come here and get all of your bird supplies. So please go to gardentime.tv and click over to their website. They have great newsletters, all kinds of information. Amanda, thanks so much and congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm at Swan Island Dahlias with Nick, and Nick, this is the time to plant dahlias. It's so exciting. Finally, we have some nice <laughs> weather. Yeah, it's time to plant. Okay, so what do we do with the, with the dahlia tubers? It's like, I noticed that you guys are planting, and you're not taking a lot of precision to plant those tubers. Dahlias aren't too picky because the eye will find its way up, no matter which way it's up or down. But you can see they come in all shapes and mm -hmm. sizes. So if they're really long and thin, we always say to lay the flat, Perfect. tuber flat, so you don't have the head too high or okay. too low. So usually about six inches deep, laying flat, and like I said, the eye will turn around and come up no matter what. If you can see the eye, oh, that's right great, there. Okay. but if, if it were laying down, it would turn around and come right back up. All right. Are you going to show us? Can we like sure. dig a hole sure. and we can put one on in here? Yeah, I'll just get the shovel here. And get... So if we don't have canby soil, which is so gorgeous, add some compost in? Yeah, just be careful if the compost is not too high in nitrogen. Okay. Uh, steer manure, bag steer manure is really good. Okay. Um, we always recommend a little handful of bone meal. All right. You and know, in the hole, work it in a little bit. About four inches or yeah, so down? Yeah, anywhere from four to six. Okay. Yeah. And like I was saying, if the tuber lays flat, because we don't want to do this. Okay. And we don't want to do that. All right. So you just would lay the tuber flat, and then basically cover it back up. Okay. You know? What's the stake for? This is to tie it to. Okay. So if, you, if you're going to end up growing a dahlia that's over three feet tall, okay. then you're going to want to have a stake to tie it as a support as it goes up. All right. Some people use tomato cages. Um, there's all different ways of you know, building uh, racks around them, but the stake works quite well. You can just tie a string around as it gets larger. And I like to put my stake in now because if you do it later, you might go right through the tuber, and that's a bad thing, and I've done that. So it's a really good idea to put it in when you're planting so you know exactly where that tuber is. Correctly, correct. Yeah, we always do that. You know, if you're planting them individually, put your stake in first. All right. So, Nick, these will even bloom this summer. Right. Most people are really shocked that a dahlia grows as fast as it does. Mm -hmm. most, most bulbs you put in the fall, the dahlias right. go in the spring, and so we have dirt fields out here, nothing. <laughs> and in you know late July to August, things start blooming, and then they bloom all through fall. So dahlia grows quite fast. So right. you get a big a big plant in a hurry. Yeah, and it's not too late, really. You can go on your website and order and get them really soon and get them in the ground for for bloom this season. Right. We still we ship through uh, the first week of June, and actually we're starting to plant out here now, and we won't finish planting till the end of May or even oh, wow. the first week of June. And a lot of times the ones that are planted later almost catch up with the early ones because sure. of the temperature of the soil. They come up much faster and catch up. So ah. there's plenty of time. I'm taking lots of orders right now. Oh, well, great. Well, you can go on to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to Swan Island Dahlias and get out there and get your dahlias and plant them. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery. A passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. At Portland Nursery, we believe that gardening is a creative endeavor that enriches our experience, enlivens the spaces around us, and provides a safe haven for the mind. Portland Nursery has everything you need to make your space feel unique, inviting, and exciting. From house plants and hedges to trees, tools, veggies, and herbs, our selection is always growing and changing, just like you. Come visit us today at 50th and Stark 90th and Division. For over 100 years, Collier Arborcare and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. Dram for Lawn and Garden, available at garden centers near you. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. 
were filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. I'm out here at Blooming Junction. I'm with Ron. Ron, it is springtime and the color, oh my. Yes, finally. Yes, the perennials are just popping and you know, just the array of colors and textures and everything else for this early phenomenon. Yeah, and these are just a few I, you know, pulled out out of the yard and thought we'd talk about them today. Yeah, well, let's uh, let's start down at that end. You know, it looks like some of your earlier earlier spring perennials that are still holding on. Right. Um, so, so but yeah, <laughs> you know, it's been it's been a little cool. So you know, we have a lot of these early spring exactly. things that are coming on, and the later spring. So let's get started down the. Okay, end. so we here we have our Dysandra, our bleeding hearts. Um, this is the most common variety here. Um, we have this um, beautiful gold heart here with the chartreuse colored leaves, um, very pretty. And of course the red valentine here. Um, all of them do very well in uh, dry shade once established. Yeah. Um, I have um, the bleeding hearts that I tell you, it's just a thicket. I'm constantly weeding them out. They, they do a really good job of covering an area quickly. Yeah. You know, and another great one looks like you have here is this guy, the, the Brunner. The Brunner, right? Yeah, this is a Sea Heart. Uh, it's got the little forget me not type flowers. Uh, this is a great uh, shade part sun plant. Um, when it's not in bloom, it just has a very attractive foliage. Right. And that foliage is coming out. Now, you know, some of those leaves will get up much larger. Yeah. So yeah, even when it's not right blooming, now. it's just definitely exactly. a, show, a showpiece. And then a couple other fun ones, you know. Wallflower. Um, our restamum. It seems like I'm always bringing this one out to talk about, but it's always in bloom. That it does. It's a, it's amazing how long those things bloom for. <laughs> exactly. And that, this one is a great one. Sometimes you'll see them in the purple, but the uh, yeah, like we this, have them in all different colors. This one's orange. And and what people may not realize is that they are very fragrant. Um, that one smells particularly good. Yeah. And then the, right down in front here, I love the silver foliage. Of this yeah, one. this, this is that. a Moroccan daisy, and this one's an early bloomer. Uh, stays nice and low, but uh, continually blooming. Uh, very nice daisy. Yeah, kind of that Shasta daisy look, but on a much more compact exactly. and, and silver And forward. I think a, a much more attractive uh, looking plant. Yeah, it is. It's, it looks yeah. like it makes a nice mound. And then these Gerberas? These are Gerberas. These are perennial varieties. Uh, they come in many different colors. Um, this is a beautiful dark red here. We got a pink. Um, this one, I'm not sure if it was cold or if that's just a particular leaf color, um, but it turns this beautiful kind of mahogany color. Because yeah. I, I like that dark stem, the dark leaf, the dark foliage. Yeah, we did like have some uh, cold nights recently, so that might be uh, what, it, what caused that. But it shows that it can take it. Exactly, exactly. And then you have a nice kind of array of colors here. A, a question for you. GM? I don't know. Quim? I don't know. <laughs> um, I hear GM or GM. I say GM. You know, whatever it is. Whatever. You know, it, is, it, it is great, great perennial. <laughs> exactly. And you so have three flavors. These are here. just three of the different varieties here. We have Mango Lassie, which is this beautiful mango color. Um, the yellow here um, in banana daiquiri. Um, and then uh, the sangria is just a beautiful, beautiful orangey. Yeah sangria color right. if and you very, will. very prolific and very long long yes morning. very yeah great great print great for, the for yard. sun part shade and then you have some really fun ones if you're looking for kind of lower more yeah ground these cover are types some, we don't uh, talk too much about flowering ground covers but i pulled out some today that i thought were really nice um, we have some of the veronicas here the creeping veronica gets a sweet little light blue flower okay um, and then this is a, a really nice one here this is blue yonder um, Veronica. Um, they spread mm, probably about 12 inches wide. Um, the creeping a little bit more. Okay. And then this guy here, this looks like a, a creeping thyme. But this it's a much, is. A much different foliage than what I used to see. It is. It's got a nice shiny foliage. This is Turbo Thyme. Um, it's an early bloomer. Um, these are great uh, pollinator plants. All these are yeah. pretty much. Um, but this one the bees particularly really love. And then you got a couple here, kind of the soft pink and the, the darker, which... Yeah, these are Armarians, um, Seathrift. 
Um, here's a more traditional pink color. Um, and this one's a nice dark red. This is a red leaf um, armeria here. Um, I love the dark foliage right. on this dark one. Dark foliage and a nice dark, darker exactly. bloom. Exactly, very dark bloom. And then move, moving next door there, looks like a really bright red. Uh, is this a dianthus? Yeah, this is a dianthus. It's just starting to bloom here, but lots of buds on it. This one's Fire Star. Um, you know, dianthus is one of those plants I don't, I don't think enough people uh, appreciate. The plant is so hardy. We have it in our dry bed out front. Yeah. Um, it gets no summer water when it's established. Um, great, neat, compact pack plant. Um, and the smell is outrageous. You know, yeah. it smells just like a carnation, because it is. Yeah. <laughs> and then one more up here, which just is an unbelievable flower. On yeah, it. this is the gentian. Um, um, this is a particularly beautiful plant because of the color. Um, that cobalt blue is not something you see too much. No. Um, you know, maybe see out this and stuff like that, but um, just an incredible plant and it blooms so early. Um, this is um, normally a scree plant. It's found in, you know, broken gravel and stuff like that, uh, rocky areas. Um, so it, it does well in well-drained soil, um, but once established, it's very hardy. And, you know, it blooms for quite a long time. Yeah. Which is great. And all of these, like we said, they are all perennial. So they come back all year perennial. after year. Right. You get long bloom times out of it. So if you're looking for a splash of color for your garden, once something comes back year after year, and you want a, just an array and a variety of all sorts of different things, make sure you come out to Blooming Junction, talk to Ron, talk to his staff, and put something new and different in your yard. So thanks for having us out today. Thanks, Ryan. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Start your new Subaru story at Capital Subaru. We are like nothing else. From the moment you step through these doors, you see it, you feel it. We do things differently here. Our people, our culture, our customer experience. Tell us what you're looking for and we'll upgrade the way you shop for Subarus. When you're just browsing, need great service, or starting your next adventure, we're always here for you. It's your story at Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Color, color, color. When you think of your garden, think of color. Then think of Margie's Farm and Garden. High quality plants and great customer service are our trademark. We make sure you're happy with every purchase. Whether you're a first time gardener or a seasoned professional, we'll help you be successful every time you step into your garden. Vegetables or herbs, hanging baskets or perennials, trust Margie's Farm and Garden, just off I-5 near Aurora. Celebrate a spring tradition, visit the Olda Klager Lilac Gardens during the annual Lilac Days. Open daily from 10 to 4. See hundreds of blooming lilacs. Take exit 21 off I-5 in Woodland, Washington. Spring has arrived at French Prairie Gardens, and now is the time to get your garden ready with wonderful hanging baskets and bedding plants. Also, sign up for our wonderful Mother's Day Country Brunch. Call us or check out our website for more details. If you're looking for some color for your garden, you have to come out to Margie's Farm and Garden. I'm with Margie, and it's like everything is in big bloom now. Oh, it is. We're seeing so much color here in the greenhouse. It's beautiful. So tell us about all your favorites. These are gorgeous. Okay, so for today, we pulled out some of our favorites. And as usual, I have to talk about our Kufia Vermillionaire and Hummingbird Lunch are two of our <laughs> favorite. And as you can see why it's Hummingbird Lunch, it is the Hummingbird's favorite <laughs> plant here in our greenhouse. Oh, it's and it blooms fantastic long to frost. So nice. it's a fantastic one. Bright orange, that's so pretty. And then this gold is amazing. Oh, we love this. This is a, um, a proven winner's rock and salvia, golden delicious, smells like pineapple. And we're so excited. We're just about ready to start seeing the bloom. It's vibrant red, wow. which is such a great contrast mm -hmm. with the, um, the leaves. 
and oh, it smells so good. It Just like nice. fresh pineapple. It is. And then I love the texture of that. It looks like a sedum or something. It almost does. This is called cerveza and lime. Fun plant. Um, it's a placranthus. Smells just like lime. Can take the hard heat and just is one of those easy care plants that you don't have to do much with, but has fun foliage and blooms great. Nice. And then I love these combinations here. Look at the fiber optic grass in a container. That's great. Oh, thank you. We love using it. It's such a fun plant to fill in. If you're not really sure what you want to do, some fiber optic grass. As you can see why it's called fiber optic grass. <laughs> it looks like it has fiber optics on it. It is. That's and it's very cool. easy care plant. It can be used as a water plant or um, in any kind of sun or shade containers. Nice, nice. And then dahlias are ready. Wow. Oh my gosh, we have some beautiful dahlias. I love that fuchsia color and then this this Whoa. orange. Aren't those beautiful? Wow. And they're beautiful together. And again, something else that will bloom all summer long. Nice, nice. And then going to fragrance, look at the heliotrope. Back to fragrant, we've got our purple heliotrope and the white. Both fantastic fragrance. If you've never smelt it, it's a vanilla, vanilla smell and just beautiful. Um, I don't put them in the full hot sun, but they take um, a good amount. Nice, nice. And you know, you have so many beautiful baskets here, but, and you're showing us little plants too, so maybe you can help us put some together, combinations? Oh, definitely, definitely. So we have hundreds of different combinations already pre-done and uh, blooming beautiful, but um, if you want to plant them up yourself, if you have your own container, or if you just really like adding your own spin on them, we can help you and we have all the components to make your basket beautiful for you. Yeah, so there's just so many just so many things to choose from and we're still going here. We got we're Celosia still going. here. And yes, this is new for us this year, this variety of Celosia and it's just getting ready to start blooming. So it's gonna be really fun to mix into containers or plant in your flower beds um, as it's starting to bloom, as the war weather warms up. And I know you always have a lot of coleus, but this one is such big leaves. It's oh amazing. my gosh, yeah, the Kong coleus. This leaf is beautiful. This is one made for the shade. Um, and the leaves get huge, and it's an easy care plant to add to your shade gardens. Wow, and then next to it, something for sun? Yes, yes, our trailing. This is, again, another easy um, care plant. Um, I had this last year in my yard. I kind of ignored it and it did fabulous <laughs> nice. and it bloomed red and did wonderful all summer, especially last year with the heat. Wow. This, this did well with the heat. Okay. And what's the name of that one? This is the um, Mezo Trailing Red. Oh, great. Yeah. Thank you. And then the licorice vine, another tried and true, so easy. It's, it's just one of those great filler plants to add to your containers or in your hanging baskets. It has the fun velvety, um, leaves and we have it in the small leaf or a large leaf Ooh, look so at that. whatever your container calls for we can help you with that nice and then straw flowers i think they're always so unique because they're all when you touch them they're already dry there it's like <laughs> a dry flower yeah these are just getting ready to open up so by the weekend we'll be good to go um, these are great for full sun easy care we also put them in mixed baskets with some verbena so they can take the hot sun and uh, bloom great all summer long. That's really unique. I've never seen them in a hanging basket, so that's really gonna be fun to have it just pop in there. It will, it will, yes. And so you have to give us some tips on care because you guys do such a great job, but now it's like, but now they're under my care when they get home. Oh, definitely. When everybody comes out and uh, they pick their plants or their basket, we talk to you about what area it needs to go to, if it should go sun or shade. We'll give advice on fertilizing and caring and deadheading because we want you to be successful with your plants. Uh, <laughs> and the staff out here, they're so friendly and so helpful and so knowledgeable. So really come out to Margie's Farm and Garden, get all your annuals, get your baskets going, and even try to make a combination yourself. So for more information, please go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over their website. Margie, thanks so much. Thank you, Judy. Since 1982, the wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall.
Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. Join Garden Time as we hit the road again. In September of 2022, we'll travel to Holland and Belgium. We'll visit the world-famous Allsmere Flower Auction, Flora World, the University Gardens of Ghent, and the Japanese Gardens of The Hague. We'll also visit the once-a-decade Floriot Expo, the World's Fair of Gardening. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Ghent, The Hague, and Amsterdam on this wonderful tour. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. Spring has arrived at French Prairie Gardens, and now is the time to get your garden ready with wonderful hanging baskets and bedding plants. Also, sign up for our wonderful Mother's Day Country Brunch. Call us or check out our website for more details. I'm at French Prairie Gardens with Stacy, and so Stacy, we are just surrounded by colorful baskets. They're just so beautiful this year. How do you do it? Oh, we love putting these combinations together. <laughs> yes, they are our pride and joy. I, yeah, I can yeah, see that. Yeah, so we do over 60 combinations Whoa. of our small mixed, and then we also do over 25 of our shades, and then we do over 40 of our big ones. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And it's, so what do, you, what do you like this year? What do you see that's a little different? Yeah, well, we actually kind of went with a lot of these crazy colors <laughs> because everybody needs a little light. This is yeah. kind of coming out of the crazy. So <laughs> we're adding a little crazy with plants. Of course. So uh, we love this flame and rose. Petunia, it's a new one for us this year, and when it's paired with this Amore Purple, it's just gorgeous. Very nice. Um, and then we love this red. Reds are always really hard in flowers and in petunias, and this Cascadia is just one of our faves. It is so dark. I don't know if I've ever seen a red that dark. It's yeah, gorgeous. and then the size of the bloom is yeah. just uh, phenomenal. Very pretty. Uh, and then we also have some shadier ones for people who have an area that maybe gets partial. Mm -hmm. And then we do have some full shade ones, but these ones are more partial. Okay. Okay. So uh, the fuchsias are having a hard time blooming this year because of all the cold weather, but right. never fear, it will get warm yes, and will. they will start blooming. Um, but those are mostly at the top and some of them will trail. There's some um, double impatience and potato vine in that one. And then a sun patient that can also go in the shade. Nice, nice. Yeah. And then look at the geraniums. Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. We just love a good ivy geranium in the center of some of our combinations. This lavender one's a really pretty one. Um, and then when it's paired with the pinks and the purples, it just is so striking. It is. It's a sweet little mix. Yes. And then we do have some single varietals. Look at that. That's uh, like your geranium or like your million bell. But this one's new for us this year. It's a hummingbird falls salvia. Whoa. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll start to trail, and the hummingbirds will just be all over oh. it, just like the skyscraper salvia. They love it. Nice, nice. And then one more. This is so pretty with these little osteos. Yeah, yeah. That one's a fun one. We kind of started to add a few different things um, after our ladies' night for years. Ladies would put osteos in there, or they'd put coleus, or all sorts of different things that we thought, why don't we do that? So this is a fun one. Um, we love it paired with the Color Rush Red and um, you know, it's just a nice trailing daisy. Nice, so. nice. And then how do we keep them nice by our houses? I mean, they're beautiful, we take them home, but how do we keep it going? Yes, colored? yes. So they need to be fed, they're high feeders. They mm. like fertilizer. So I would say every week with the Jacks, we like the Triple 20. Okay. That's our favorite. Um, we fertilize them here almost daily, but it's on a lower concentration. Okay. So that's kind of why it keeps them going really good here. Uh, and then in terms of pests, you just want to make sure that you keep an eye on them. And if you happen to get petunia worm, you use a spray. We have a really great organic one okay. by Monterey and it's, it's just awesome. And wow. it'll kind of take care of them. And then 
uh, they'll just keep blooming all through the summer. Excellent, all, right. all good tips. But you know, we have to talk about traditions. And yes. I think coming here for traditional Mother's Day weekend is, it's amazing. Yes, yes, yeah. so uh, we are actually starting the weekend off with something really fun and new. It's called Beers and Bouquets. <laughs> yeah, it's a great way to come and enjoy some time either with your mom or your kids' mom on a date night. It's more for a 21 and over crowd, but you get a beer, we're gonna make a centerpiece or a bouquet that you can then take home to mom. Oh, that is so much fun. Yeah. But then what's going on Sunday? Sunday we have our brunch. Aww. So that's, um, I would definitely put your reservations in, sure. but we have seatings every hour from 930 to 1230. It's a buffet style brunch. It features our ham, it features sausage, mm. it features egg bakes. We have all sorts of yummy goodness and especially all those great things that you love from our bakery. Uh, and then what about the kids? There's some activities for them. Yes, yeah. So if you're already doing brunch and you just want to come out and get a basket, we are opening our barnyard activities oh, fun. and our mega slide's going to be open. Oh, so, so much fun. There's lots of stuff to do. We do close at three though, so make sure you make it here before then. Uh, uh, well, you know, I I love tradition and I love coming out here and there's just so much to do. It's about the plants, but it's also about taking care of our moms on this holiday weekend. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for coming. Join Garden Time as we hit the road again. In September of 2022, we'll travel to Holland and Belgium. We'll visit the world famous Allsmere Flower Auction, Flora World, the University Gardens of Ghent, and the Japanese Gardens of The Hague. We'll also visit the once-a-decade Floriot Expo, the World's Fair of Gardening. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Ghent, The Hague, and Amsterdam on this wonderful tour. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle. Develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar-powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. Celebrate a spring tradition, visit the Holda Klager Lilac Gardens during the annual Lilac Days. Open daily from 10 to 4. See hundreds of blooming lilacs. Take exit 21 off I-5 in Woodland, Washington. Garland Nursery, a must-stop destination for those that want to play with plants and grow with their garden. Whether you are a new or a seasoned gardener, Garland Nursery can help fulfill your gardening desires and your landscape needs. From organic veggies, trees and shrubs, to colorful blooms, from the newest trends in garden supplies and garden decor, shop Garland Nursery to find that perfect plant or piece that fills you and your garden with delight. It's always a beautiful day at Garland Nursery. Well, it's spring and as we're spending more time out in our yards and in our gardens, you know, we kind of look at our lawns a little bit differently. I'm here with John from JB Instant Lawn. And John, I just redid my lawn here and I did a little overseeding because it was full of a lot of moss and a lot of things I wasn't real happy with <laughs> from, from the winter time. And, you know, and as we're looking at kind of revamping our lawns, there's a couple different routes of we can go. We can either like redo our entire lawn and take it all out and start fresh, or we can do an overseeding, right? So if we are you know, starting fresh, what do we need to know about how do we, how do we prep and do our, our yard for like starting from scratch? Well, first of all, I mean, considering the area, uh, if there's like a lot of weeds, a lot of rocks, we need to probably get all those out first, right? Right. Level it out, uh, apply lime. Lime is your friend, okay. for, especially for the Northwest area. Um, and then um, put down the seed and um, then water it. However, uh, with this process, we need to consider how we put the seed on it. Right. So in actuality, we, as a professional, you should probably level it and then roll it and then put down the lime, okay. the seed, and also uh, the fertilizer. Okay. And then water accordingly. And it's important to keep that that water because as that you know seed starts to sprout 
we don't want it to dry out, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And especially right now, at this point of time, this April is amazingly dry. So yes, good watering, right. moist at all times. So if, you know, if we already have a lawn established like I did, you know, I had a lot of moss in it. And so I'd gone through and removed and mossed out and got rid of all that moss and all the weeds out of there. But then I was left with a pretty, pretty sparse looking, looking lawn. So is there, you know, do we do something differently with the lawn as far as an overseeding versus starting scratch? Yeah, for overseeding, um, you have the existing area, such as when you, when you put the moss out on it, right. it died basically. So there was different areas where there's a lot of sparse basically right. in that right. area. So uh, to overseed that is, you should probably try to get that out as best as possible. Right. And then mow it as low as you can. So when you actually put the seed on, it can actually touch the soil. Right, because otherwise it's going to get kind of suspended up in, in that grass where it's not going to germinate any air. It needs to be touching that soil. Absolutely, right? Right. absolutely. It has to touch the soil for it to grow. Right. And then also, you know, same, same concept, you need to keep it moist. Absolutely, at all times. Right. Especially, again, during these periods of time with these dry out times. They have to be moist within probably two to three weeks. Right, and when I did my overseeding, I, I did a layer of like a peat moss. For us, we, we, we like to give a little bit more nutrition. Okay. Maybe a, a compost, a lawn oh. compost, and just feathering it on. Never... Right, not, not buried it, buried exactly. it at all. It exactly, just, just feathering it on and then water accordingly. Right, and then, you know, there's lots of choices for, for grass seed when you go in. You know, JB's done a great job of kind of laying it out pretty easy packaging to read. But there are some basics we need to kind of look at as far as, you know, what seed do we use? So how do we pick out what seed is going to be best for our lawn? You'll notice on this particular one here, um, you're going to see a sunlight, six hours right. of sunlight. So this particular variety is a three-way blend of ryegrass. It basically is a Northwest uh, product. Um, and it germinates very, very quickly. And it has a unique color to it. It's a deep blue green color okay. to it. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And um, in this area, because of the weather, it grows very, very quickly. It usually germinates within 10 to 15 days. Right, okay. Yeah. And then there are some also that if you have more of a, sh a shady area, right? Yes, absolutely. So this one here, as it shows, uh, sun and shade. Uh, a lot of people <laughs> make this very difficult. It, sun just is perennial rye, and this shade is a fine fescue. So if you have a shade issue, right. which is five, it needs at least five hours of sunlight. So with this pr particular product, it will handle some of the shaded areas. Right. But um, very good product. Right. Because like in my lawn here, I get a lot of, you know, like a morning sunshine and an afternoon shade. So I'm getting a lot of a lot of moss right. in mine. So this, right. that was what, kind of what I chose for mine because it's getting, it is getting sun, right. but just not all, all yes. day long. Yeah, exactly. So John, why is it important to look at kind of the type of grass seed that's in the package? Well, because this particular product, all these products are grown here locally. Um, um, and this product actually is made or fit for this area completely. So there is no bluegrass in this product. Right. Bluegrass grows other places. Right. But ryegrass, fine fescue, tall fescue, grow perfectly in this area. And we actually made all of these to make sure that all the customers has what they need. Right. So you know, it's important to pick out you know, the right grass seed for your yard. You know, JB's uh, seed is grown here locally, which is important. To, so we have a success when we're growing our grass in our yard. So John, you know, I'm assuming we get more information on your website, or you can go to gardentime.tv for more information on JB Sod and the lawn and the grass seed that's right for your yard. So John, it's a pleasure having you out in my yard and thanks for making it pretty. Thank you very much. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks, including our landscape rock and bark products as well. 
We are proud of our industry-leading state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. It is true what they say. April showers definitely bring Mayflowers, including this brand new petunia for 2022 called Big Deal Finger Paint. At Bauman's Farm and Garden, we're going to be open for the next three Sundays, starting this weekend on May 1st for the next three. And in honor of our first Sunday open, we're going to be doing a class about our brand new plants for 2022 and kind of give you a sneak peek at all of our production greenhouses with all of these amazing flowers in it. It's gonna be this Sunday at one o'clock, including some of our favorite new begonias, our brand new scented begonia for this year, Peachy Keen. So come on out to the farm this Sunday at one o'clock. Give us a call at 503-792-3524 to sign up for the class because space is limited. We look forward to seeing you soon. I am at the wonderful Seabright Gardens today with the wonderful Kirk. And oh. Kirk, you know, it's so beautiful to come to your place and to see your gardens because it gives us so many ideas. And you don't mind us taking pictures, do you? No, not at all. Everyone can come and take photos. Yeah. yeah they don't need permission. Good, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Because it does have so many um, different ideas. And we all have these kind of tough places that we want to do, you know, plant. But you have so many lovely plants here. Yeah, we've gotten a little carried away. So, yeah, yeah. Too, but, so let's kick off. So yeah. let's start on this end, and if you can tell us about this beautiful bleeding heart. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is the Dicentra spectabilis, a, a pink bleeding heart. It is um, it's a great plant. You know, it's been around for many years, and one thing I've discovered with it is that it can take a drier area of the garden, which is you know difficult to plant in some some. Especially our native our native plants, they soak up a lot of moisture. Their roots are more fibrous. I found they perform well in those drier, drier locations. In fact, this winter I moved the pots that we overwintered underneath a uh, fir tree for the winter, and those are doing fantastic. Excellent. So, Excellent. yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And speaking of dry shade, or drier, shady area, I mean, this these can grow in full sun to full shade, and um, we have this this pine tree right behind us. I have the Solomon seal right at the base of the uh, of the uh, pine tree there. It's growing great. It's starting to bloom now here in spring, which is you know, added bonus, those nice, lightly fragrant flowers. Very nice. And, um, well, what do you have here that's blooming so prolific? Oh, this Triorella, this is wow. Spring Symphony. And I just, they're lightly fragrant, they're so nice. And this time of year in spring, they're just, they're just such super performers. They, they just need, you know, some well-drained soil. They can, and they're, they're a little, they're a pretty easy plant to grow in the garden. Nice. Nearly full shade to partial shade. Beautiful. It works great, yeah. And then blue, I love having blue yeah, in the garden. Yeah, these are just opening up. I love this Curtilus porcelain blue. It, it, it blooms, I swear it blooms 12 months of the year. Every time I see it, it's blooming. It's just starting to open now, so you can't quite see the, the full effect of the flowers, but, but it's a super performer, and it's been evergreen here. During the last winter storm, it, it, it uh, looked a little sad for a few days, and then it just bounced back, back up with new foliage, so I, I got a... Uh, porcelain blue there. It's just kind of cute too. Yeah, and blue heron. Yeah. Nice. Tiny, but it's not a thistle. Yeah, the Canthus spinosa. It's, um, I got a couple of here. This one's was growing in full shade and this one in partial sun. The flower is coming the one in the partial sun because it's in a pot, but a little earlier than normal. But um, I planted one, I lived in Portland many years ago, uh, last century actually, and uh, I had one of these planted at the base of a fir tree, a big old fir tree in the back, my backyard, and wow. it is still there doing great. And it's just amazing how, and they're nice because they're so versatile, you can plant them in full shade to full sun. It, it doesn't matter. They perform well in any any environment. So, and, and you nice are, go ahead. I'm sorry, you're known for your hostas. And yeah, that is oh amazing. yeah, you can't come to Seabright without knowing about hostas. <laughs> We're, we are one of the largest hosta nurseries this half of the United States. So. Um, I pulled out a couple that look nice at this time of year. You know, they, some of them have their show at certain times of the year where they're really showy. This here is I Declare. It has that nice bright color to it. And um, First Frost, this is a great hosta. First Frost, it's the colors in, this, in, in spring are just so striking and um, it has thicker leaves. So, you know, if you have slugs, you, you got to put them to work for them to really get their <laughs> meal there. It's going to take them a while to get through those leaves. And you know, yeah. I love that you have them around the garden, not just yeah. in the ground, but in containers. So you could do that in the yeah. garden or on a deck or something. Yeah, in fact, I was looking at that going, that needs to go in a container. It, <laughs> it would look so nice in a container. Yeah, they, Beautiful. they, they, they make a nice show. 
Um, what else you got? Oh, well, I have, um, this time of year in the spring here, we have the Pacific Coast Irish blooming. And we have a selection, we have selections here we offer that are um, ones, um, we, a friend down in Australia, we went to his place and, oh. and we're just amazed at his uh, Pacific Coast Irish seedlings, which, you know, it's, <laughs> it's our native plant, but they're, they're just doing an awesome job down Beautiful. there. He was, so he um, hybridized some for us. And this is one of his, one of the selections from his uh, hybridizing work. One of uh, several that we have, so nice. yeah, yeah. And really, you're so well known too for your epimedium collection yeah, because not too many people have those. Yeah, so we, beautiful. We have this time of year; they they look so nice. They they they're distant related to the Mahonia Oregon grape, oh. so they um, they um, they're pretty easy to grow in the garden. They can once they're established, they can take drought even, which is nice. You know, we have a difficult time with our Mediterranean type summers, so sure, it's definitely nice to have that. Um, I just wanted to point out this one here. Ooh. You know, some of they have different colors of leaves. I really like this creamsicle. It, oh. You know, it starts off, here's one here, it has pink tones and then they fade to white. Wow. So, yeah, the flowers are white, so they don't, they're not really showy with that white foliage, but yeah. Very anyway. nice. And fern collection, you have uh, so many different ferns. Yes, so do. just yep. a few of those. Yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna point out a few. Right now, this in the garden, this uh, sunset fern is um, um, up up right now as well in the garden. It's 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 pretty reddish orange in the garden, but here in this pot, you can see some of the last year's earlier foliage. And then nice. the ear lady fern is, is really nice at that light, light green with the red, red stems and deep red, um, almost mahogany, uh, burgundy, isn't it? Pretty. Yeah. And, and the frilly one. That's just a fun one, that parsley leaf fern. It's a and, good name for it. And iris, because that's another part of your business is yeah, iris. Yeah. Um, here at the location, Mid America Garden is here as well, and they specialize in bearded iris, and they have a huge selection of of dwarf bearded iris, which work great in the garden. You you know, a neglected spot that's sunny and dry, you know, if something that's cute. They're, they're just great performers at this nice. time of year. Yeah. And then you have these early, and then you go into the taller ones. Exactly. So really, you have a long season of yes, iris. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then if so, you can touch on your fuchsia collection, yeah, I wow. just couldn't help myself. They're, 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 they do pretty well in the garden. They were, they probably would have bloomed if we didn't have that one winter storm we had. So um, anyway, but I, you know, these are ones that we prevented from freezing, <laughs> and they're starting to bloom now. And I just, I just thought. You know, we have a huge selection here that we offer in our shopping area. So I thought we should uh, bring them out so you can. Oh my gosh, you do it. People are aware of some of the stuff we carry that we don't advertise right, on our website. Right. So, yeah. Well, because it's like, how, how much can you talk about on TV or on a, on a commercial? So that's why we come out to visit, but you <laughs> have to come out and visit and see this unbelievable collection of plants that you could take home and the display gardens. Please go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to Seabright Gardens website and get all the information to get out here. Thanks so much. Happy Thank spring. Thank you. Yeah, happy spring. Thank you for watching Garden Time today. And don't forget, spaces are limited for this fall's Garden Time tour. Please go to gardentime.tv for more information. And for more information on today's show or the Garden Time tour, <laughs> go to gardentime.tv. Judy and I thank you for watching. We'll see you next week on Garden Time. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.